So we're beginning our module on loops. Now, loops are a way of doing repetition. And just like with procedures, when we talked about how uh, they helped us model a common problem-solving strategy, like dividing a large problem into smaller ones that are more manageable, in the same way loops let us bring into our programming designs a common problem-solving strategy that has to do with specifying a repetition. Now, there are three styles of repetition that we'll work with. Uh, one is repeating an action for a fixed number of times. Another is repeated as long as or while a certain condition is true or until a certain condition becomes true. And finally, we could repeat an action for every element of a group or set. Now, we're going to look at the first two versions first. Um, here are some real life examples, like if you're a checker in a grocery store, you're going to ring up your items as long as the customer has more, and it's a repetitious task. You scan each one, do the same thing. If you're adding a list of numbers, you can keep adding numbers to get to the end of the list. If you have a bunch of employees, you can cut a paycheck for each employee that's in the roster. So there are lots of examples where you want to have a, a process that you define and then carry out repetitiously in a various number of ways. Now we're going to start with a simple programming example, which is a multiplication table. And our job here is to print a multiplication table um, you, for a number we input in a text box. And the multiplication table is going to get printed in a list box. Now we could do this in a way. Uh, with our current set of tools. So here's how we might do it. Uh, we read our number from the text box and we keep it in string form and also create a numerical form, clear the list box, and then um, add items one at a time uh, 12 times. So we need 12 lines here. Now this is clumsy and it's really repetitive and what a pain to write this code. Uh, and if we wanted to make it even a little more flexible, like say it only goes up to uh, say 8 times 8 if we put in an 8 or 10 times 10 if we put in a 10, that would be even worse. So there are some very natural tasks that we wouldn't even be able to do, or at least not with a very sophisticated technique involving procedures, which we'll look at later. Um, but luckily, we have some nice, simple repetition constructs that VBA gives us. So the first one we're going to look at is um, what's called the for next loop. And this is used when we can determine the number of repetitions we want to do before we start doing the loop. So OK, here's a simple um, for next loop. And all it does is print the number that we read in uh, 12 times. So here we read the number in, and in its string form. And then we just add an item to our list box. And what happens here is, uh, if you look at the for loop, we start with a control variable that we're calling j. We set it to 1 to begin with. It could be any integer. And then we go up to 12. I should say non-negative integer. We go up to 12 here. So what's going to happen here is that we do the loop once for each value of j. So we start with j equal 1 and do the loop. And then when we hit this next, j becomes 2. And we do the loop again. Hit the next, j becomes 3. We do the loop again. And we keep going until we get up to 12. So we're going to get a string of uh, 12 fives in our list box. OK, here's another example. So I'm clearing my um, answer box and then I'm doing a loop for j equal 1 to 12, but this time instead of reading an element to print, I'm printing j, converting it to a string and printing it. So what happens? Well, when j equals 1, we'll print a 1. Next time around, j equals 2, we'll print a 2. Next time, j equals 3. And we keep going like that till we get up to 12. All right, now we have the elements we can put together to make a multiplication table. So here I brought up this all together. Um, I read my element from the text box, get the string version as well, clear out my list box, and then I'm doing this loop for j equal 1 to 12, 
and I'm adding an item each time. And what does it look like? I print my number as a string. Here's my ampersand. I print x, meaning multiplication, times. I print my j as a string. I print the equal sign, and then um, continue to the next line. I, I actually figure out what the numerical version times j equals, convert that to a string, and print that. So if my number is 5, when j equals 1, I'm going to print 5 times 1 equals 5. Then when j equals 2, I'll go 5 times 2 equals 10, and so on. And I'll go up to 5 times 12, because I said my control variable should go from 1 to 12. OK, now here's a little variation. You don't actually have to have a number as the upper limit, or the lower limit for that matter. It could be a numerical expression that evaluates to an integer. So here I'm going actually for j equals 1, 2, the number I read in. So if my number is 5, j will go from 1 to 5, and each time I'm printing m, so I'm printing it 5 times. If I put in a 6, I would print 6 sixes, and so on. And I can make the same modification to my group multiplication version. Um, so make j go from 1 to whatever the number is instead of from 1 to 12. And uh, it just prints that portion of the multiplication table. So for example, if the number equals 5, uh, what this is going to do is print 5 times 1, 5 times 2, 5 times 3, up to 5 times 5, and then it stops. Uh, if I put in 6, it'll go to 6 times 6, and so on. Here's a flowchart for this for next loop. So uh, we start, and some of these steps are uh, performed by Visual Basic without you having to do anything other than write this loop. So here I'm calling C, C var is my control variable, S val is the starting val, E val is the ending val. So what Visual Basic does is it first starts the control, sets a control variable uh, to be the starting value. And then we check to see if the control variable is bigger than the ending value. If it's not, we do the loop statements, increment the control variable, meaning add one to it, and then come around, check again, and we keep doing this loop until the test succeeds. The control variable is bigger than the ending value, and at that point we skip out of the loop and continue with the rest of the program. Now I'm going to show you an example that does this, and um, this is in the multiplication demo, which is posted on the site. So here we have, I, I'm using the constant max instead of an actual integer, and I wanted to show you uh, something cool you can do here. So what I'm going to do is set up a breakpoint here in the code, and then I'm going to go over to the multiplication demo, well actually I can do it right here, and say I'll run this subroutine, and here it is. Okay, I'm going to use 5 and a for next loop. And now what happens is it takes it goes through the code up till the breakpoint, and then I can step through with the F8. So let's see, right now this guy is set, but this guy isn't. But as soon as I push F8, now it's set. And I'm going to get the numeric form, it's 5. Clear the list box, add these items. And now let's go around the loop here. And J hasn't been set yet, but once I get into the loop, J equals 1. And I print my line with my string 5 times J equals. And then I do this um, little expression to get a 5. And that's done. And now I do next J. So right now J equals 1. But after I do next J, J equals 2. And I keep going like that. And I'll go around the loop. Let's see, I'm up to 3. Now I'm up to 4. Now I'm up to 5. And 6. Oh, I'm going to 12. I'm up to um, 9. 10. 11. 12, done. Okay, because after it finished 12, the next value was 13. 
and we don't do the loop because 13 is bigger than 12. That's the end. And I can just uh, click here to get rid of this breakpoint. And if we look over at our list box, well, it, let's just minimize this. Here's, here's what it printed out in the list box. Okay, so you should have some fun playing around with this and changing the code a little bit. So, and stepping through to really understand how it works. Uh, oops, I lost my PowerPoint. Here we go. All right, next uh, presentation, I'll show you the do-while concept.